In the year 2054, mind control technology has become widespread, resulting in an extremely changed society. For a good price, humans now have the liberty to control other humans and make them do inhumane jobs. At the heart of the controversial technology is its creator, billionaire Ken Castle, famous for his mind control games Society and Slayers. The first game, Society, is a virtual community life simulation game. It is similar to The Sims, but instead of controlling a fake character, the gamers can control real people and make them do whatever they want. This is a win-win situation for all people. Those who are looking for some fun can splash some money and make others do their work, while those who need money can simply become a society avatar and get paid. The game received such critical acclaim that Castle became the richest person in the world in a matter of weeks. Move over, Fortnite. Several months later, Castle created another game, Slayers. This controversial first-person shooter game is a simulation that gives the players full control of a human being, allowing them to act out their most savage fantasies online in front of a global audience. The game uses real death row inmates as avatars, who are offered the chance to participate as an alternative to their death sentence. The convicts who can survive 30 battlegrounds are set free, although no one has ever achieved this feat yet, which is good because setting them free makes no sense. Cable is the crowd's favorite in this game, having survived a record 26 matches. No inmate has managed to last more than 10 before him. He is exclusively controlled by Simon, a young pro gamer from a wealthy family. The two continue to emerge victorious from every single game, defying all odds. Next, we see ads of the game everywhere, and how Cable only has four sessions left to achieve freedom. Despite being a notorious criminal, people are rooting for him to win. At one of these lives, telecasted battlegrounds. Cable faces off against other players in intense gunfire. Each character earns points for saving a teammate and killing the opponents. There are also other people on the battlefield who are tasked with doing menial jobs like sweeping, cleaning, and so on. These people are seemingly unaware of the violence around them. As expected, Cable manages to slaughter everyone during the fight. In the next scene, the tech-savvy billionaire and computer programmer Ken Castle is interviewed by popular TV host Gina Parker. At at first, Gina introduces Castle and his inventions to the audience. Castle invented self-replicating nanites that replace brain tissue and allow humans to control other humans' actions and see through their eyes. Then, both of his record-breaking games, Society and Slayers, are promoted. Castle mentions that while Society is a source of income for many people, Slayers focuses more on the entertainment aspect. The inmates aren't paid a dime, but whatever money is generated from the live streams is donated to fund the prisons and other public infrastructure. This is why the the U.S. federal government has given full support to Slayers. Gina asks him about the other people who do menial tasks in Slayers, and Castle replies that they are called Genericons. They are sent into the Slayers environment with pre-programmed actions, with no one controlling them and no way to react. Genericons are basically like NPCs in games. If someone is shooting near them, they won't run and will simply carry on with their tasks. Although they only have to survive one game to earn freedom, their chances of survival are next to nil. After the interview, an activist organization called The Humans hacks into the show's display system, and a man calling himself Human's Brother claims that Castle's technology will one day be used to control people against their will. Hearing the broadcast, people become intrigued, but before Human's Brother can reveal anything else, Castle's men locate its source and shut it down. Elsewhere, at the prison, Cable sits alone, watching fellow prisoners playing basketball. He thinks about his family, but is soon interrupted by another inmate named Freak. Freak wonders how Cable has managed to successfully passed 27 matches, leaving only three to get his freedom. He also asks how a person like Cable ended up in prison in the first place. Although the latter doesn't reply, he gets a flashback where a man is bleeding to death in a confined room. Back in his cell, a woman drops a picture of Cable's wife and daughter and asks him to sign a paper. She explains that her son David is a big fan of Cable and wants an autograph. When he comes closer to ask about the picture, the woman takes his blood sample, claiming that it would prove his signature to be authentic. Elsewhere, Cable's wife Angie goes to work as a character in society. In the game, the characters are dressed in funky costumes. Angie's character is controlled by an obese man called George, who makes her talk to a man with a pig nose. The man starts to grope and kiss Angie, but her attention is on her husband's banner across the street. Suddenly, Human's brother hacks the society system and continues to condemn Castle. Meanwhile, the prisoners are taken to their next battlefield. As soon as they arrive, a brutal fight erupts. Several of them end up 
dead from gunshots, truck accidents, fire explosions, and other gruesome ways. Meanwhile, Cable notices a woman pre-programmed to walk over the battleground, unaware of the violent environment around her. Simon has Cable save the woman from a truck accident and bring her over to a corner of the street. However, when Cable is distracted by his opponents, the woman again walks up to the street and is run over by a truck. There's only so much you can do to save a lemming. Despite the setback, Cable and Simon eliminate all the opponents one by one and eventually emerge victorious. Seeing this, people from all around the world erupt in joy. Next, we finally get to see Simon, who is a rich, spoiled brat with the latest technology at his fingertips. While lying on his bed, Simon orders online upgraded ammo for Cable and also chats with some girls. Suddenly, his feet is hacked by humans, who shows him footage of Cable shooting a man in a confined room. This is the reason why he became a prisoner. As Simon watches in shock, the anonymous group asks him if he wants to talk to Cable. The scene then abruptly cuts to Castle, who is ready to introduce a new inmate, Hackman, into Slayers. The plan is to kill Cable before he wins the two remaining games and leaves the prison. Unknown to anyone else, Hackman will not be controlled by a player, and thus not be handicapped by the ping that causes a small but dangerous delay between the player's command and the Slayer's action. Later, as Freak and Cable are talking about their lives, they notice the terrifying Hackman. Freak reveals that Hackman murdered a group of people and turned himself in. In the next game, Cable is stunned to find Simon communicating with him, since avatars and their controllers can't talk to each other. It turns out that the humans hacked into the system to make this possible. Soon, the battle ensues, and Simon uses the live stream as an advantage to guide Cable. While dodging gunfire and targeting back the opponents, Cable notices that Freak, who has volunteered to be a genericon, is sweeping the street. Sadly, he ends up in the crossfire and gets shot dead. Shortly after, as Cable is searching the perimeter, Hackman arrives at the scene and savagely attacks him. He then proceeds to finish Cable off, but fortunately, the game's timer runs out, much to the relief of Simon. Meanwhile, Angie applies to get custody of her daughter Delia, who has been placed with a wealthy family. The caseworker denies the application, reminding Angie that her job as a character in society and Cable as a convicted murderer isn't going to guarantee safety for their daughter. Elsewhere, as Simon is upgrading Cable's armor, he is again hacked by Human's brother. The latter reveals that with only two games remaining until freedom, Castle is planning to kill Cable. So, they have to get him out immediately. He then urges Simon to relinquish control of Cable during the game, and after a lot of convincing, the teenager finally agrees. Back in prison, Cable is contacted by the same woman from before, who informs him that Simon will be letting go of control during the final battle, and if he wants to see his family, he needs to escape. Cable immediately agrees, and tells the woman that he needs to get drunk before the battle. On the day of the final battle, Cable suits himself up with a bulletproof vest. He notices a bottle of vodka in his suit and drinks it in one go. In the battleground, Cable gets heavily drunk and frequently stumbles on the ground. Witnessing this, Simon scolds him to get on his feet if he wants to stay alive until their escape plan. After a while, Cable goes to a garage, forces himself to vomit in an ethanol gas tank of a truck, and then pisses in it. Surprisingly, he can now start the truck because of the ethanol in the vodka. However, just before he drives away, Hackman clings to the door of the truck and attacks Cable. The two struggle for a while, but Cable eventually manages to escape by slamming the beast into a pillar. On the way, several guards and cars chase him, but Cable manages to evade every single one of them. After causing some of the cars to crash into each other, he finally gets out of the Slayer's perimeter. But just as he exits the truck and starts running, a missile lands near him and throws him away. Fortunately, he is left unharmed. Meanwhile, the broadcast of the game is stopped, prompting the audience to believe that Cable is dead. But the TV host Gina, who is also watching the game, is positive that Cable is still alive. That evening, Cable goes to his apartment but cannot find his wife there. Because he hasn't met Angie since he was imprisoned, he doesn't know that she currently works as an avatar in society. As he sits alone, a woman from the humans group approaches him. She introduces herself as Trace, who is the same woman who contacted him in prison. She then takes Cable to the humans headquarters. There, human's brother tells Cable that they took his blood sample earlier to crack the nano code, which made it possible for Simon to talk to him. He adds that Castle isn't willing to set him free, so they helped him escape. The humans wants Cable's help in bringing down Castle before everyone can become his slaves. Initially, Cable is uninterested in helping out, but when he learns of Angie's current location in society from them, he agrees. On the other hand, the escape plan has put Simon in a difficult position. He is labeled a cheater, locked out of his gaming account, and investigated by the 
FBI for helping Cable escape. Inside society, Angie is being harassed by a man in a hotel room. When the man forces her to bend down, Cable arrives in the nick of time and rescues her. However, as the two are preparing to leave, Hackman emerges from the elevator, shoots Cable in the chest, and takes Angie away. Luckily, Cable is still wearing his bulletproof suit, and he doesn't sustain any injuries. He then finds Hackman, and an intense fight ensues. This time, Cable gains the upper hand and blows off one of Hackman's legs with a gun. Shortly after, the couple reaches a place where several society characters are dancing. Even there, Cable is pursued by Castle's men, who open fire aimlessly. Just when it seems as if Cable and Angie are about to be killed, Gina approaches them in a car and helps them escape. It turns out that she is also a part of humans and takes them to their headquarters. There, the group deactivates the nanites in Angie and Cable's brains, and the latter remembers that the original nanites were tested on him while he was still in the military. But he still hasn't regained full memory. Human's brother then examines Cable's brain and discovers that he was already under Castle's control, even before he was imprisoned. It turns out that he became one of the first test subjects to try out the new technology. Sadly, Castle tested it to an extreme, causing Cable to shoot his own friend. This is why he was imprisoned. Later, Angie apologizes to Cable that she couldn't get custody of their daughter. Just then, Trace arrives and reveals to the couple that the wealthy father who adopted Delia is none other than Castle himself. Upon learning this, an enraged Cable decides to finish Castle once and for all. That night, he infiltrates the billionaire's mansion and finds his daughter. However, he cannot reach her, as it turns out to be a projection on the wall. After a while, he locates Castle, who starts explaining about his recent invention, controlling several people at the same time. He also shows a demonstration by controlling his men and assigning them to attack Cable. Fortunately, Cable manages to fight them all off. Castle then reveals that while Cable came looking for him, his men tracked down the human's headquarters and killed all of them. He also reveals that 98% of his own brain has been replaced with nanites, but this allows him to control others rather than be controlled. Furthermore, he shares his ultimate plan to release airborne nanites which will infect the entire United States within six months, giving him the ultimate control. Then, Castle takes Cable to a basketball court where Hackman is playing on the ground. He then takes control of Hackman and assigns him to attack Cable with a knife. Thankfully, Cable manages to break his hands and snap his neck twice to kill him. Cable then tries to attack Castle, but he is frozen in place. It turns out that the bad guys have already reactivated his nanites, allowing Castle to take control over him. In the meantime, unknown to Castle, Gina and Trace have escaped the slaughter on the human's headquarters. Dead set on revenge, they broadcast Cable's nanocode to the world, showing a live feed of what he sees. This exposes Castle's plans, and the entire world turns against him immediately. Back at the mansion, Cable, who is now fully under Castle's control, gets badly beaten. After this, the vicious billionaire orders his men to bring out Angie, who is captured alive from the human's headquarters, and their daughter, Delia. Castle then tries manipulating Cable into killing his own daughter. Cable, who still has a little bit of control, can resist, but not for long. Fortunately, elsewhere, Simon gets his account unblocked after he gains public favor again. He immediately restores control over Cable and guides him against Castle. Now, with the battle being two against one, Cable slowly points the knife at Castle. As the two fight for the knife, Cable tells Castle to imagine being stabbed. Castle unconsciously does so, allowing Cable to kill him and removing his control over everyone. With Castle dead, the audience cheers for the demise of their potential slaver and dictator. Cable then convinces Castle's technicians to deactivate the nanites from everyone, freeing all the characters in society and slayers. The movie ends with Cable, Angie, and their daughter taking a family trip down the road. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.